What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now if you want to play one of the greatest control based archetypes this game has ever seen, a deck where you really have to make your opponent think by navigating them through a labyrinth of back row and just cutting off their plays at each and every turn and being able to manifest an army of monsters that every time you activate one of those traps you're gaining advantage off of it, well let me introduce you to Paleozoic. Paleozoic are an archetype comprised primarily of trap monsters. The strength of this deck lies in its ability to control the field with trap cards while simultaneously gaining advantage by swarming the field with trap monsters and ultimately ending with a barrage of totally awesomes. Before we delve in depth into each individual Paleozoic monster, it's important that we discuss the mechanics of Paleozoics being trap monsters and how they function and interact with other cards on the field. Each main deck Paleozoic trap monster has two effects, an effect that activates as a normal trap card would when placed in the back row, and an effect that states the following. Once per chain when a trap card is activated while this card is in your graveyard, special summon this card as a normal monster, aqua type, water, level 2, attack 1200, defense 0. This card is not treated as a trap card. If summoned this way, this card is unaffected by monster effects, also banish it when it leaves the field. So let's take a look at Paleozoic Olenoides. While in the back row, Olenoides essentially acts as a dust tornado that you can use to target and destroy a spell or trap card on the field. However, when a trap card is activated while Olenoides is in the graveyard, you can activate and chain Olenoides as Chain Link 2 to the activation of that trap card and special summon Olenoides to the field. For example, let's say you have one copy of Olenoides in your back row and one copy in your graveyard. You can activate the copy in your back row to target a spell and trap card on the field, then chain the copy of Olenoides in your graveyard as Chain Link 2. The chain will resolve backwards, Olenoides will be special summoned from the graveyard, and the Olenoides on the field will destroy the spell or trap card that was targeted. What's also cool about this interaction is that you can chain your Engrave Paleozoic to the activation of your opponent's trap cards as well. But keep in mind that you cannot chain multiple Engrave Paleozoic effects to one another. While this is prohibited, you could hypothetically activate a trap card, chain an Engrave Paleozoic, activate another trap card, and chain a different Engrave Paleozoic to keep the chains of summons live. Also keep in mind that you cannot chain an Engrave Paleozoic to a counter trap card, since counter traps are spell speed 3. Another aspect that shouldn't be overlooked is the Paleozoic's immunity to monster effects. While 1200 attack is fairly weak, Paleozoic monsters can be the perfect tools for outing monsters such as a defense position Zodiac Dryden't. Also, with the lingering threat of being combined into Totally Awesome always present, your opponent is going to want to clear the board of Paleozoics as quickly as possible. But with their built-in immunity to monster effects, traditional methods of removal such as Castell the Skyblaster Musketeer or Diamond Dire Wolf are useless against the Paleozoics outside of the battle phase. Finally, one other interaction that might come up is if the Paleozoic monsters are flipped face down by a card like Book of Moon. Since the Paleozoic monsters are treated as normal monsters when they are special summoned, they would be flipped face down just like any other monster would. However, since it was flipped face down, that Paleozoic monster is no longer impervious to monster effects and would go to the graveyard instead of being banished when it leaves the field. Now that we've covered our fundamentals, let's dive into the Paleozoic monsters themselves. Starting off with Paleozoic Canadia, Canadia is basically a Book of Moon in a trap card, while also maintaining all of the benefits of being a Paleozoic card. Canadia can be very useful for disrupting Xyz plays or flipping down monsters before they have the opportunity to trigger their ignition effects. Dinomicious is next, boasting a pseudo karma cut like effect. What's cool about Dinomicious is that its activation cost is to simply target one card on the field, and then at resolution, you discard one card to banish the target. It may seem minor, but not needing to discard for cost can really add up in a grind game in an instance where Dinomicious gets negated. Paleozoic Aldonia boosts the attack and defense of a targeted monster by 500 until the end of the turn, and Hallucinogenia reduces the attack and defense of a targeted monster by half until the end of the turn. While seldom used in the deck, these effects could be useful considering the Paleozoic monsters have a measly 1200 attack while on the field. And having more Paleozoic monsters in the graveyard at the ready is never a bad thing. 
Paleozoic Leancolia targets one banished card and returns it to the graveyard. This is useful for a couple reasons. First off, since the Paleozoic monsters banish themselves once they've been special summoned by their own effect, this is a way to recur those resources back into the graveyard and keep a stockpile of Paleozoic monsters at the ready. Beyond that, you could also use Leoncolia's effect to return a card that was banished face down from a card like Pot of Desires. The card will be returned to the graveyard face up, and this allows access to cards other than the Paleozoic cards, such as Absolute King Backjack or Lost Wind. Paleozoic Morella is one of the best Paleozoics, enabling you to send one trap card from your deck to the graveyard. Not only does this fuel the graveyard with more Paleozoic cards, but you can send any trap card to the graveyard, meaning you can immediately tutor cards like Lost Wind or Breakthrough Skill straight from the deck and have them online for the next turn. We've already discussed Paleozoic Olenoides and its ability to destroy a spell or trap card, and wrapping up the main lineup, Paleozoic Pakaya acts as a themed trade-in for the archetype. Since the Paleozoic monsters are all level 2 water aqua monsters, then it makes perfect sense that the frog engine synergizes perfectly with the archetype. Swap Frog is probably the best starter card you can have in your opening hand, because opening Swap Frog plus any additional water monster means you can start the game with a totally awesome on the field, backed by an armada of back row, Paleozoic and non-Paleozoic alike. Dupe Frog is surprisingly effective because it diverts all of our opponent's attacks towards the Dupe Frog, protecting the Paleozoic monsters in battle. And once the Frog Engine is online, Ronin Tonin is capable of upgrading a single Paleozoic monster into a totally awesome, or any rank 2 at your disposal. We alluded to it earlier, but it's definitely worth discussing Absolute King Backjack. As a quick effect, you can banish Backjack from the graveyard and excavate the top card of your deck. If it's a normal trap, it's set to your back row, but otherwise sent to the graveyard. Incredibly, the card that was sent from Backjack's effect can be activated that turn. So not only does Backjack help accelerate the entire Paleozoic archetype, but it also synergizes with non-Paleozoic normal trap cards like Lost Wind, Reckless Greed, or even a powerful card like Dimensional Barrier. Moving on to the extra deck. Paleozoic Opabinia helps take the deck to another level and usually spells Demise for your opponent if it manages to stick on the board. Only requiring two level 2 monsters, Opabinia has a continuous effect that allows you to activate Paleozoic trap cards from your hand. This essentially turns any hand of slow Paleozoic trap cards into pseudo spell cards and allows you to be much more proactive with your plays. Now if that weren't enough, as long as Opabinia has a trap card as Xyz material, you can detach a material and add any Paleozoic trap card from your deck to hand. Backed by immunity to monster effects and a defense of 2400, Opabinia can quickly spiral out of control and accrue massive amounts of advantage. The other Paleozoic Xyz, Anomalocaris, requires 3 or more level 2 monsters to summon, which may seem like a large investment, but can potentially pay off in dividends. Once per turn, if a trap card is sent from your spell or trap zone to the graveyard, you can excavate the top card of your deck. If it's a trap card, add it to your hand, but if not, send it to the graveyard. If you can manage to have Anomalocaris stick on the board, you can easily recoup the advantage you lost making Anomalocaris in the first place. In addition to that, as a quick effect, as long as Nomalocaris has a trap card as Xyz material, you can detach a material and target a card and destroy it. These effects combined with Anomalocaris' immunity to monster effects makes it quite the offensive powerhouse. In addition to the themed Xyz monsters, it should come as no surprise that Totally Awesome is the best monster at this deck's disposal. Once Totally Awesome hits the field, combined with the massive amount of disruptive back row, it shouldn't take long before you have complete control over any game. Looking at the rest of the rank 2 toolbox, Sky Cavalry Centuria is good for removing threats, number 45 is useful for negating troublesome effects, and the combination of Cat Shark and Digusto Phoenix can be surprisingly lethal in the right circumstances. Looking at the spell lineup, Paleozoic don't need much other than a few outlets for consistency. Card of Demise is the perfect addition to the deck since all monsters are also trap cards, and being able to accumulate a potential plus 2 in terms of card advantage can allow you to easily out-resource your opponent. Pot of Desires is also a solid option, as there aren't any individual combo pieces that we care about banishing. 
Worst case scenario is banishing a majority of the frog engine. Foolish Burial is a nice addition for Backjack or Ronin Toten. And finally, if you're playing a 60 card variant, which I would highly recommend, that grass looks greener can automatically load the graveyard with a torrent of resources and win games on its own. Finally, wrapping things up with the trap lineup, we've already discussed the plethora of Paleozoic monsters available at the deck's disposal, but there are plenty of non-Paleozoic traps that synergize with the archetype and provide a solid foundation for the Paleozoic monsters to emerge from the graveyard. Dimensional Barrier is the obvious choice because it's arguably the best trap card in the format. Lost Wind is incredibly powerful as well because not only can it negate effects, but it also reduces the stats of our opponent's monsters and is able to be reused and provide such an advantage in the Paleozoic deck that it's a mandatory addition. Reckless Greed is good for maintaining advantage, and its downside can be mitigated by the fact that the Paleozoic monsters generate advantage from every trap card played, meaning you won't technically be locked out of accumulating resources. Any of the mirror forces are a good option since the Paleozoic monsters have low attack, and being able to blow out your opponent's entire board is such a satisfying feeling. Compulsory Evacuation Device, while limited to 1, is an excellent 1 for 1 in a lot of cases against extra deck monsters or any annoying threats, and plus you're going to gain advantage off of it if you chain a Paleozoic monster to it in tandem. And finally, one of my personal favorites, Aegis of the Ocean Dragon Lord, bestows protection to every level 3 or lower water monster from battle and destructive card effects until the end phase. Oh yeah, and don't forget that Imperial Order is utterly fucking busted as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this introduction to Paleozoic. If you did, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and also be sure to back me on Patreon, because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.